Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and this is the camera review of the Asus Zenfone Max Pro M2. Now this phone has a dual camera setup on the rear with a 5 megapixel secondary camera for taking portrait shots and a 12 megapixel primary camera with f1.8 aperture. On the front it has a 13 megapixel camera with f2.0 aperture. Now before we get started this is the camera interface. Asus is still using some off the shelf camera application with some customization. There is no auto HDR for both the front and rear cameras. As of now, there is no portrait mode for the front camera as well, but it will be added with a future update. This is the interface for video recording. We can record video even in 4K resolution, but there is no option to record 1080p at 60fps and image stabilization doesn't work in 4K resolution. Now these are some sample pictures taken in daylight and well-lit conditions. All these pictures were taken in auto mode. There is no auto HDR mode on this phone. Images look natural. Even the color reproduction is close to accurate colors. That's why images look a bit dull and boring. Exposure control and dynamic range is good. Capturing speeds are slightly slow. Every time we take a picture, camera app freezes for a split second. And sometimes even the camera application has crashed. While taking portrait shots, we can change the focus point and the amount of background blur effect we want. Now these are the sample pictures. All these pictures were taken with maximum blur effect. Edge detection is not perfect. Some edges are pretty soft, but it's still good. Color reproduction, skin tones and exposure control all look pretty good. Background blur effect looks a bit artificial, but we can change it before taking a picture. Sometimes occasionally, portrait mode doesn't work. Here's a sample picture. Now these are some sample pictures taken in low lighting conditions. Color reproduction is good, but images are slightly to the warmer side. Images are soft and lack sharpness. Even the capturing speeds are a bit slow. Now coming to selfies, these are some pictures taken in daylight and well-lit conditions. Selfies look a bit overexposed but have good exposure control. Skin tones and color reproduction looks good. Capturing speeds are slightly low and dynamic range is just average. Most of the time selfies look a bit blown out if there is any bright background. By the way, as of now we can't take portrait selfies but that feature will be added with a future update. Now coming to low light performance, these are the sample pictures. In low lighting conditions, once again selfies look a bit overexposed. Selfies are soft and lack sharpness, but they do have good color reproduction. Now coming to video recording, this is a sample footage recorded using the rear camera in 1080p resolution with image stabilization on. This phone uses electronic image stabilization, so some part of the footage is cropped. Color reproduction and exposure control is good, but there is a bit of focus hunting and it can be annoying if there are too many objects in the frame. Focusing speeds while recording video are quite good. Stabilization and noise cancellation is also pretty good. Now for the front camera, here is a sample so footage. So guys, this is a sample footage recorded using the front facing camera of Asus Zenfone Max Pro M2 and audio from the phone itself, so check out the nice cancellation and stabilization offered by the phone. As you can see, footage is super cropped, like I'm stretching my hand completely but still I'm barely able to see anything on the camera. So footage seems to be stable but it is not wide enough and it's definitely not sufficient. And overall, personally, I'm not liking the footage quality, at least as of now. Even this footage is recorded with image stabilization, so the camera sensor is further cropped. Stabilization and noise cancellation is pretty good, but exposure control could have been better. Whenever there is a bright background, foreground becomes dark. In well-lit conditions, footage does look good. I just wish front camera had much wider field of view. So guys to conclude, cameras on this phone are good but not the best in the price segment. Now with that said, just like the Asus Zenfone Max Pro M1, cameras on this phone might also improve with a future update. 
So for a starting price of 13,000 rupees and considering the Snapdragon 660 processor with a 5,000 mAh battery, overall design of the phone, notch display and the light form factor, at least as of now, you will have to compromise a little in the camera department. Once again, cameras can improve with a future update and if you use a Google camera application, we might see better results. I'll make another video about that. Let me know if you're interested. So guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you're planning to buy this phone, use the link in the description. It always helps the channel. And if you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and I'll try to make it as soon as possible. I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech signing off. Have a nice day.